G'day prospectors, Tony from Gold Talk, Leonora. Funny things are happening in Leonora at the moment. A lot of strange things. We went to a Christmas party last night, Lisa and I, which is a little bit strange to see us out in public with clothes on. And we bumped into one of our groupies. Now I'm not saying that uh, Michelle, because we can't use her real name, is weird or anything, because that wouldn't be fair and reasonable. But apparently she really likes watching our channel in bed with her husband. Who am I to judge? Who am I to judge? And anyway, she bailed us up at the Christmas party last night and said, it's been three weeks. I think what she actually meant to say has been three weeks, you useless so-and-so. Since we had a video out. And she's quite right. Um, my humble apologies. It's, uh, it's a really busy time of life for Lisa and myself. We're sort of... Uh, dealing with a few family issues at the moment uh, as we do at this stage of proceedings and so we've been doing a few trips down to Perth which um, is unfortunate but we've had to do it And of course, when we're not uh, sorting out that shit, we're, uh, we're on the ground working hard to try and catch up. So my apologies to you, Michelle, and her husband, who I assume are watching this with their clothes on. But of course, that's not really my problem. And being naked, I think, is is a is a wonderful thing. Unless, of course, you work in a barbed wire factory, in which course it'd be a very dangerous thing. Anywho, so what have we been up to apart from the yucky stuff? Uh, we're out on this project, and um, we're chipping away. It's it's as I said, it's just been fairly disruptive over the last month or so and um, just with our sort of other priorities um, but we're chipping away we're, we're going fine here we've sort of worked out one of the flows and so we're just harvesting that at the moment um, what I'm sort of doing today and oh man it's bloody beautiful now that spring's here and we're up to our mid 40s uh, that's celsius in case you're watching this from overseas none of that quincy fahrenheit nonsense um so yeah mid 40s at the moment which is uh, always a challenge and so way too hot to be detecting like it, like it's just, uh, you know, it, it's just, anyone says they do it, well, maybe you do, maybe you don't, because it just sucks. And so what I'm doing is, uh, I'm just creating a bit of a pad, and instead of, it's a slower way to do it because normally the, the optimum is just to chuck it all through a dry blow and be done with it, but um, I trust Lisa's uh, detecting more than I trust a dry blower in some ways. Um, but this has been really useful because we're, we're trying to pick up the flow of what's going on. I've, I've, we've worked it out a little bit downhill. I'm trying to work out a bit uphill. Um, so by being able to detect in situ nuggets and plot them on the GPS, 
uh, that means we can see where we need to go to next. Um, it slows things down a little bit, uh, but you know, ultimately, who cares? You know, you get there eventually. Just about buttoned up one of our other projects. Um, I've got about uh, three hours rehab to do, and then I'll be um, moving goose bumps the bulldozer down this way. Uh, much easier to do the rehab, but um, also you may be able to pick up that we're on the side of a hill at the moment and. Once we, um, once we get down to that creek area down there, um, which is sort of ultimately where I'm trying to get to, because when you, I mean, not every time, by the way, you know, like it's, um, it, it's not a hard and fast rule, but generally where you've got a slope and you've got a gold flow coming from somewhere, which we do through here, um, usually the best place is where it slows down. So if you have uh, a hill, oh, okay, so you can't see that, but if you have a hill and then a bench, hill, bench, or just a hill and the bottom, it's usually down the bottom or on the benches where you want to be working, because uh, that's where things gather, um, so the heavy settle and consolidate, and that's usually your richest parts. Um, We've picked up the, the lead, if you like, from up here, so we'll just work up here. Um, and by hopefully tracking it down, we can see where and if it's uh, settled. So that's sort of what the, the methodology is here. I don't particularly like running gear in this sort of heat. It's not the most fun. But it's... Um, bit of a necessary evil and what we need to do. And it's a bit of an opportune time just while I'm tickling away. Is just to very genuinely thank you for your support. Lisa and I are sort of, well, we're always really humbled, actually, that that people want to hear what we have to say, and, and um, people want to try and learn from us, and, and it's it's a it's sort of a wonderful, fantastic thing for us because it sort of. I suppose in some ways validates what we do. But for us, we genuinely like helping people get better and be successful in an industry that's been really good to us. And yes, we charge. But if you also do your homework, you'll realise that we've been going for 10 years now. And we have, steady. We haven't, um, we haven't upped our prices once. We're still charging the same amount that we did 10 years ago. Um, for us, whilst it is a little business in some ways we don't do it just for the money we we do it because we generally want to help genuinely want to help people and get them onto some gold so I do thank you uh, very much for your support and we also hope that each and every one of you, even, you know, watching these videos or whatever, 
we sort of hope that you feel involved in what we're doing. We know that there's lots of reasons, there's the million reasons why people uh, can't or don't want to come out and do the kind of work that Lisa and I do. But they want to get involved in it. Um, and we, we really hope that you feel as though you are. Next year there's um, plenty of action happening. Uh, we've been We've been away, believe it or not, working on a uh, on a lithium project. Um, and in case there's any smart Alex out there, I have no idea about lithium. But I've googled it. And we've been doing a little bit of exploration work with the mob. And we should find out hopefully this afternoon. We should have some assay results in uh, to see whether things are worth progressing. If it is, I'll laugh my bloody tits off because uh, I'm sure I've mentioned this before, but my dad always said, you know, it's not just about the gold, Tony. There's other things out here. So if we wound up making a mozza off lithium for some bloody reason, I think that'd be absolutely hilarious. But it's a very good point. And that is... that your Western Australian miners ride is not exclusive for gold. And if you've got an interest in looking for diamonds or looking for spodumene or looking for mineral sands or, or looking for kaolin or looking for whatever, get out there and have a look. It's not just about the gold. So this is, this is about the right point here. It's interesting that uh, I've got some pretty shallow greenstone uh, just over from about that point on there. And you can see it quite white up there. Uh, that's, that's calcium based dirt, lying, a thin layer lying over greenstone. We're not really getting much gold in that. But once we start hitting more of the ironstone, and you can just tell because it goes from white to red, uh, basically red means ironstone, white means calcium. And in this particular scenario, once we hit the irony section, we're hitting rubble. Uh, and that's where the, the gold seems to be lying. Now we need to open that area up because you don't know it's the calcium level until you've dug it because it just looks like stock standard quartz float on the top. And also we are finding a few stragglers in it and uh, like those war movies, we don't leave anything behind. Well, you always do, but you try not to. <laughs> you try and convince yourself that you're getting it all. You never are. Um, so we've got our uh, courses down in Mandra, which will probably be uh, March, early March, mid-March of next year. I think Lisa's already got some dates up on our website, so go along and have a, have a look to that. We've got our, all our training course dates for, for next year up on the website. When I say we, obviously I mean Lisa. 
So that's exciting. We're doing two camps this year. There's a sort of had a lot of demand for it. I don't know what we'll be doing. It all comes down to where we're working at the time. Because that's the whole point of the camps. You come along and work with us. And wherever possible, I put you to work. That's what it's all really about. Free labour. Yeah, a bit more greenstone there. A bit more rubble there. Oopsies. Another thing we've been toying, um, toying with the idea of, and I'd be very grateful for people's opinions or, or um, thoughts on it, comments on it, as you will. Um, with Les and I run this, uh, obviously as a business, Finding Gold, um, and so we incur expenses and, and, and claim GST credits and all those u -butte things. Um, but it also means we, all the gold we get, we, um, we put through a refinery, we pay GST on it and we pay taxes on it. And so basically, when we send a parcel away to a refiner, what we do in order to uh, close the production loop, if you like, is we smelt our gold down. Doesn't matter what it is, we just chuck it in the, in the uh, furnace and send away a gold bar. It makes security of our product a lot better. And most importantly for us, it's easy. So there's no effort. It takes me an hour or so to smelt up some gold bars. And, and even less to get it away to the refiner that we use in Adelaide. I think I'll just have to push some of this dirt on a bit. And so one of the things we've been toying with is that finding native gold nuggets is not easy and every bloody one of them is unique. Now whether people get off on that or not or put a value on that I, I, I genuinely don't know. Traditionally there's there's talk, oh, you know, the pretty nuggets get 20%. Well, the people that are saying that don't really know that. They're just going, well, that's what's been said for the last 50 years. Pretty nuggets will get a premium, that's for sure. But ultimately, gold is only worth, like everything else in life, it is only worth what someone is prepared to pay for it on any given day. That's all anything's worth. Gold obviously has a, a, a value, it has a spot price. It's fantastic. And at the moment it seems to be up around $100 a gram, which is very bloody nice, thank you very much. <laughs> and even though I don't mean this, but global unrest has its upsides as well. And so one of the things we've been um, we've been thinking about doing, and it, and it sort of uh, it, a lot of it came after a, a couple of conversations we had with um, prospectors we know that do it. And, oh well, um, and that's basically setting up one of these eBay stores and sell, selling gold direct through to the public, as it were either as individual pieces when they're interesting enough 
or as job lots, etc. etc. Um, there's nothing new about this, there's a few people doing it. Um, I guess the difference with us would be volume, which sounds arrogant, but you know, we'd have a little bit to, to move across a year. Um, and hopefully some sort of nice collector's pieces as well. The downside of it is that our starting point is spot price on the day. After it's refined. So usually we'll get spot price minus about 7%, something like that, depending on the gold. And for virtually no effort, and that's the key. Lisa and I are only a two-person operation. Well, I think it's a bit of a stretch to say two-person, let's say one and a quarter. Lisa being one, me being made the quarter. And so the problem that we would have with the idea is eBay takes 10% straight off the bat. Which is okay because, you know, we gain a few percent that we're not losing at refining. Um, because all of your gold nuggets, doesn't matter how clean they are, they've got dirt in them, uh, silver, lead, other, other base elements, you know, uh, it's only after something has been absolutely refined, gold, that it's 999 pure. So we gain there, but where we lose on is the time that it takes to do it. So I guess my question to you folks is what are your thoughts I mean basically is it something where you think well whether you would pay or you think people would pay for gold um, that Lisa and I find and I suppose ultimately the question is are you prepared to pay a premium for that gold I mean, from my side of it, it's just gold. And I really like the idea of not putting all the gold in the furnace. Because a lot of this gold, all of this gold in one way is state's history. And they are so unique and special and hard to come by it does seem a shame to melt it down. But, I have to be very practical as it is a business. And people have to be prepared to pay for it, which I don't know if they would. So, I'm putting it out to you folks to give me your suggestions and thoughts and ideas about whether it's an idea or not. And I'd be most grateful for your responses. So we're slowly getting there with this pad. I reckon this will be about the end of it, it's getting too bloody hot. Oh, I might do another bench down there. I can tell by the uh, by the dust that the the wind has dropped now, and that means the temperatures are going to bloody rocket up very quickly. gears going along nicely. It's actually been a bloody good year as far as maintenance and everything goes. 
few surprises for next year. But as always, Lisa and I just keep plodding along doing things in our own time. So, Michelle and her husband, I hope this has uh, provided the, oh, I don't know, the, the, I shouldn't say stimulus, but I hope this provides the environment that is suitable for you <laughs> whilst you're watching me in bed. <laughs> Nothing weird about, it's Leonora, mate, anything happens up here. And prospectors, again, just a massive thank you. Thanks for your support. It doesn't go unnoticed. This is about where Lisa's going to edit the, uh, cut the, cut the clip away. See you, prospectors. Don't put this in, love. People will think that I'm bonkers. Actually, I think people already think that I'm bonkers, but this will sort of lend a bit of evidence <laughs> towards the fact that I am. It's an old saying. If you live in Leonora, people living in Leonora either are insane or they're going insane. It just depends on where you are. I don't know, I don't know where I fit in. Got to make it all nice and smooth for my beautiful wife. I don't want her falling over and hurting herself, otherwise <laughs> all our work grinds to a big hole. Really nice rubble in here, there'll definitely be gold in that lot. See you prospectors.